let's just talk first of all about the context of who was this woman? She was a startup founder. And like so many other startup founders, she dropped out of Stanford at the age of 19 to build a company. Like so many other founders, she adopted a fake it till you make it ethos and attracted a ton of money from very powerful people, including Henry Kissinger and Rupert Murdoch. And at the height of her heyday in 2015, she had an on paper net worth of $4.5 billion because of how many people who, who had invested in her blood testing startup. Unfortunately, that startup was found to be fraudulent, and she was charged with uh, four guilty counts in her trial earlier this year and was just sentenced to 11.25 years in prison, which I think was stunning for her. There are reports, this is an alleged statement from her, that she once said, they don't put pretty people like me in jail. And I think what we see is, you know, justice has come for her. Well, and I think let's let's go to the pretty people like me, because one of the things, having met her, she was a self-made woman in, in many senses of the word. She got a lot of attention, many magazine covers. I mean, the whole issue of gender, it was something she was very aware of when you look even during the trial at the extent to which she was consciously both going to type, going against type. What was your take? Because you've covered so many women entrepreneurs over the years. Well, I female entrepreneurs are unfortunately rare, rarer than they should be in the entrepreneurial ecosystem. We see lower levels of funding by, by many, many factors, right? Like women get 2% of all venture funding. So when you see a woman in the tech space, getting that much venture funding, getting that much attention, it, it, the cycle kind of feeds into itself. And she's feeding into that by saying, you know, I'm going to wear the black turtleneck. I'm going to lower my voice. I'm going to present as powerful woman. Um, so I think she received an outsized degree of attention because of her gender. And then fast forward to the trial, you know, she alleged that she was raped when she was at Stanford, that her former partner, Suni Bawani, had kind of coerced her and exerted control over her. I, I don't want to say playing the victim, but she's aware of her gender by invoking those charges. You know, one of the most poignant parts of the trial was where she had this list of when she'd, you know, wake up, thank God, do yoga. But it reminded me a little bit of this movie, Michael Clayton, where Tilda Swinton's in the mirror going, <clears throat> shake hands, look firm, look people in their eye, the eye. Like, there was this very much that she was trying to play to a certain um, myth and stereotype that I think a lot of women really feel pressure to do when they're in the boardroom, when they're asking for money. And that doesn't exonerate her. But did that strike you? I know it's something you looked at during the trial. You know, the degree to which she really was fabricating an image for herself? Well, I thought it was interesting to see how she presented herself during the trial versus how we saw her present right. herself in the years that she was running Theranos, right? She always had stick straight hair, really severe makeup, and again, the black turtleneck. For the trial, I don't know her natural hair texture, but it's been curlier. It's been looser. It's been lighter. Softer, she has a one-year-old child, and now she's pregnant with another child. Um, and no one, uh, I don't think she has said exactly how far along she is, but I've seen court reporters who were there last week for the sentencing saying she looks to be six to seven months pregnant. So she is visibly pregnant. So that invokes all the ethos of being a mother and maternal and all those typically good, warm feelings. And so it's been really interesting to see the image that she's presenting in the court versus the image that she was presenting, you know, six, seven years ago. It's been fascinating to look at the reaction to this. And it, there's a term that's come up that I've last heard during the Martha Stewart trial. Is it schadenfreude, I think, is, is that's a term I've heard you now used with Theranos. Do, do, when you look at the coverage and the reaction um, to the sentencing, what have you seen? So she faced up to 20 years in prison, and uh, her, her legal team had requested that she only spend 18 months in prison and spend the rest of the time in some combination of 
home confinement and community service. Prosecutors were seeking 15 years and what came out was 11.25. I, I think the reaction I've seen is mostly surprise. You know, she submitted, uh, her legal team submitted 130 letters of support, including notably and confusingly uh, Senator Cory Booker. Mm -hmm. So you had a lot of people testifying that, you know, she was just trying to build a company and, she was over promising on the technology, but she's not personally profited from anything. You don't see her on a yacht in the south of France or any sort of overt show of, of rich, right? But I, I think the reactions I have seen have been kind of interesting. You have people who were surprised that she got that much because I think, unfortunately, where we are in this news cycle of the last six years, we're not always used to seeing justice delivered in, mm -hmm. in the way that one might expect. Um, I've seen other people scolding people for being surprised and other people also scolding people for saying that because she's pregnant, she should get a softer term. Um, I've seen a lot of um, activists pointing out that many pregnant people are sentenced to prison every year and the color of her skin and the prominence of her case makes her no different than those people. So if we are to talk about pregnant people who are incarcerated, we should have a broader conversation. So I've seen the conversations kind of run the gamut from examining the incarceration system to what it means for Elizabeth Holmes exactly to I've also seen some interesting comparisons about where her case ranks among white collar criminals and the message this case sends to other startup founders. Well, and, and she has been vilified for her pregnancy, two pregnancies. And, you know, when you know you're heading to jail and you become pregnant, you know, that can cause criticism or it can say, hey, you know, when she gets out, her fertile years will <clears throat> probably be behind her.